Okay, on to... Extra... Nope, 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 not what I meant. Not what I meant. Not what I... No, go back. No, I don't want this one again. No, we're not doing this one again. Trying again. Chapter 7. Extra chapter 7. Satsuki's Heart. I don't have any clear memories of my childhood. But I do remember my parents being kind. Who's Satsuki again? It was dusk and the room was completely unlit. It was so dark inside that we could have been entertaining guests I'd never have known, because I'd never been able to see them. I felt alone, but I knew I wasn't, and I was determined to get my mom's attention. Mom, I'm hungry. Assuming she hadn't moved since the sun had started setting, my mom was probably s still sitting at our small kitchen table, leaning, leaning on her elbows and cradling her forehead. This was the third time I'd informed her of my desire to eat, and finally this time I could hear her start to move at the sound of my voice. This was my home, and it always just felt like an empty void to me. And now it was more than just a feeling. I'd noticed my voice was acting a lot more than it ever used to. All of our furniture was mysteriously disappearing day in and day out. Yesterday was the toaster. The day before was the piano. The day before that was the chest of drawers. And today was Dad. Where had Dad gone, I wondered. Is Sachiko? Mom? Mom's shadow moved slightly, silhouetted in the shade of black, only slightly different from the rest of the blackness around me. She extended her arm in my direction. I'm sorry, Satsuki. Who's Satsuki? Her tone, like the house itself, was dark. Maybe it was just sound that was way of general mood in the room. Hopefully that's all it was, though. I thought. Mom, the lights won't turn on. I'm sorry, Satsuki. Suddenly, my field of vision shook violently, and my surroundings began flittering like shooting stars. Flashes of light were whizzing to and fro as the barely discernible ceiling pattern above me was phasing in and out of existence. The legs of the table I was sitting at began to melt away. I saw my mom's face for a moment, and then there was this strange march of frying pans flying through the air. Which it was especially strange, since we only owned one frying pan. My entire face began to swell and go into convulsions, and my ears were howling and ringing. I could barely hear anything anymore. The areas under my nose and ears were all wet and cold as well. Was that snot? Earwax? What was I feeling? Satsuki! I'm sorry, I'm sorry! See, whenever this happened, Mom would always hang back and rest her head for a bit, but would then hug me with kindest, warmest, most sickening, sweet embrace. That's why I love them. I love frying pans. I love what they represent to me. I'm sorry, dear, but this is all I have. Mom gave me some potato chips. They weren't exactly my favorite brands. So their flavor was kind of iffy, but it's the thought that counts, right? There were cart cartons and cartons. Oh, it's that girl. It's it's Yuka's friend who likes chips. There were cartons and cartons of potato chip bags all throughout our house, and they were all for me. I was the only one who really ate them. And whatever I did, Mom always seemed to be a little happier for some reason. So frying pans were my favorite objects, and potato chips were my favorite food. Satsuki, in three days, you have a very important role to fulfill. A role? What role? It's something joyous. You're to be reborn through the incomparable wisdom of the Archbishop. You'll be one rank higher than ordinary humans. Satsuki, 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 what's up? Oh, Mizuhara. This was Harue Mizuhara. I've known her since grad school. Grade school. I still wasn't sure how to react when someone called out to me, though, so I just started, stared at her blankly. What is it? Well, aren't you Miss Gloomy? Why well, aren't you Miss Gloomy again? Can't you at least give me a what's up every now and again? Whatever, Satsuki. This weekend, we have to hit up land. We can't just keep talking about it and not go. I can't do weekends. I have meetings. For crying out, why not leave all the religion crap to your parents? You at least want to go with me, don't you? Aha, I know that face. I know, well, I know how much you love those mocky pants, mocky pants that I bought for you from there. I do want to go, but ignore your parents, girl, ditch them, give them the heave-ho. Mizuhara was generally really funny. She had a certain sense of timing about her that made it hard for me not to get sucked in. I didn't usually laugh as a rule, but this girl could really bring it out for me. Honestly, wouldn't it be nice if people could pick and choose their parents? You could be so bright and cheery if you weren't always cooped up in a Darksville. Plus, you got a good pair on you, so why not use those those to bring all the boys to the yard? Be, be all like boingy boingy. Later that day, Mizuhara had gotten into a car accident on her way home from school. Her jaw had shattered on impact, preventing her from ever smiling again. Since then, she hadn't come to school a single time. You must see Satsuki. It's nice of you to come. You're such a good girl. Despite your young age, you show a firm grasp of reason, understanding, and notability of self-sacrifice. You truly are a wonder. 
I was brought to the suspicious place through some magic that obviously leaned a bit on the dark side. I remember it was really cold here since I was wearing nothing but a thin black robe. Follow your, following her parents' orders without talking back at all, she must be a very good child indeed. This was the headquarters of Martuba's tomb. I was in a room lined with terrifying looking device and everyone around me was dressed in similar robes, listening intently, almost passionately to their leader's voice. My mind was a blank slate. I had a slight smile on my face, but I didn't want to make eye contact, so I just focused all my attention on the random piece of floor. Yes, Mr. Magari, our child truly is most honest and obedient. As you can see, we'll do anything we can to be, be of use to the order, anything at all. Is that so? Then how about you pay your fucking dues for a change? I wonder if you could even guess how many times you've defaulted. Y yes, mistress. Hatsuki, my pawn, do you accept this fate of yours of your own violation? I gave an empty smile and turned my gaze lazily toward the corner of the ceremony room. What I said there gave me a sudden chill, though I did my best not to show it. Sticking out from the massive earth, earthenware pot was Harue's face. Thoroughly bloody with eyes rolled back into her skull. Ignoring your parents. Ignore your parents. Stitch them. Streams of drool and blood alike had stained her lifeless chin. She appeared very much as if she had literally just been thrown away like yesterday's garbage. Satsuki, my pawn, what's it to be? The parents of those who accept this fate will be granted a powerful position within our holy order. The room fell silent, no doubt, anxiously awaiting my response. I've been trying my hardest to swallow my emotions, but there are just some feelings a person can't express, and one of them made its way up from my heart and out of my mouth. I don't want to die, Mistress Magari. It was accompanied by a sudden flurry of tears, and my parents immediately began to show signs of extreme panic on their faces. They looked at me as if I just committed the greatest affront known to man. They were afraid, but also disgusted. Their stares were cold and accusatory. This is a transformation experiment, right? I don't want that. All right. The simple information statement was followed by one quick flick of the wrist, and suddenly my parents were now missing the upper halves of their bodies. It required almost no effort. My parents each now lay in two pieces, making a squishy, slimy, awful sound as they died. That's just what I was hoping from you, Setsuki. Living on your, live on for your friend, Mizuhara. You can't live under me. I'll take you in as my- You can live under me. I'll take you in as my pet. I'll even prepare a replacement parents for you. Aha. I- Now then, let the spirit energy surgery begin. I- I am Setsuki Mizuhara, and I have just been born on this day. Well. Okay. Soul testimony from Yumi Hara has been unlocked. Oh, we got an extra chapter. Just I dropped my remote. <laughs>